Hi everybody, let's continue by looking at factors that can shift the aggregate demand curve, focusing this time on net exports. Remember the equation for aggregate demand, which is C, consumption plus I, investment plus G, government spending, plus X minus M, which is net exports. Let's now look at factors that can determine whether net exports increase or decrease, and therefore whether aggregate demand increases or decreases. If the value of this bracket increases, aggregate demand will shift to the right. How could that happen? Well, exports could increase and or imports could decrease. That would increase the value of the bracket and shift AD right. If the value of the bracket was to fall, then AD would shift to the left. So a fall in exports, a rise in imports. Now remember, aggregate demand is a measure of spending in the economy. So you can't just say exports rise in quantity or imports rise in quantity. You've got to be specific. You've got to make sure that you talk about export revenues coming into the country and import expenditure because that is what is going to be measured in the aggregate demand equation, not the quantity of exports sold or the quantity of imports bought into the country. So be careful with that. Right, what factors can influence the level of net exports in the economy? Well, real disposable income earned abroad. So if there is a boom abroad, for example, then uh, folks abroad are getting richer their, mar their marginal propensity to import goods is likely to increase, which means that for a domestic country like the UK, the demand for our exports is likely to increase. So if there is higher income abroad, demand for exports is likely to increase, which is going to increase export revenues, ceteris paribus, and therefore shift aggregate demand to the right by increasing X minus M. Vice versa, if there is a recession abroad, especially in the countries of our major trading partners, so take the UK, that could be a recession in the USA, a recession in Germany, then the marginal propensity for those guys to import is going to reduce, therefore the demand for UK exports is going to reduce, the revenues generated from UK exports will reduce, reducing X minus M, shifting AD left. Similarly, real disposable income earned at home. So if there is a boom in the UK, the marginal propensity to import in the UK is likely to rise, we call that the sucking in effect of imports. The sucking in of imports is likely to take place, right? And therefore, our import expenditure is likely to rise. So that's going to increase M in the X minus M bracket, which is going to pull down the value of the bracket and is going to shift 80 to the left. However, if we get poorer, so if there is a recession at home and we get poorer, the marginal propensity to import is going to reduce. We suck in. Love that, don't you? We suck in less imports, therefore the import expenditure is likely to fall, increasing the value of the bracket and shifting AD to the right, ceteris paribus. Of course, exchange rates have a massive influence on X minus M. Strong exchange rates or weak exchange rates? Now, keep things simple, guys, yeah? Keep things really simple. When you think strong or weak exchange rates, go straight to my uh, mnemonic devices, these memory devices, SPICE and WIDEC. When we think SPICE, we think Strong pound, imports cheap, exports dear. You got me on that one. And WIDEP, that's the opposite. Weak exchange rate, imports dear, exports cheap. That makes your life super easy, guys. Don't overcomplicate. Don't let your mind go into weird directions. Keep things really, really simple. Those two mnemonic devices is going to help you like crazy. So you have a strong exchange rate. It means imports are cheap and exports are dear. If imports are cheap, what's going to happen to demand for imports? Well, in theory, Demand for imports will rise, and expenditure on imports will rise. Not good, that will increase the value of M. At the same time, exports are more expensive, they're dearer. That means demand for exports will fall, and revenues generated from exports will fall, reducing X. So a lower X and a higher M, this bracket is going to fall in value and shift AD left. A strong exchange rate, bad for an economy in terms of AD shifting left. Weak exchange rate, the opposite will happen. Imports become more expensive, Therefore, demand for imports will fall, and the expenditure on imports is going to fall as well. Good, so the value of N is going to go down. Exports become cheaper, so demand for exports increase. The revenues generated from exports will increase, increasing the value of X. Therefore, the value of this bracket will be higher, shifting 80 to the right. So a weak exchange rate, especially for a trading economy like Japan or China or Germany, is great, great news because X minus M will increase and 80 will shift to the right. Okay? So that's a big determinant of X minus M and therefore of AD. Protectionism at home and abroad, of course. 
right? So there is strong protectionism abroad, maybe tariffs on UK exports, quotas on UK exports, maybe even sanctions or embargoes on UK exports, or non-tariff barriers on UK exports. That might prevent us being able to access international markets with our exports and uh, will reduce the amount of export revenue we can generate. So if there is strong protectionism abroad, the value of X is going to be lower. Vice versa, if there is very low levels of protectionism abroad, it might be easier for us to access international markets and to sell exports and to earn revenues. However, if there is protectionism at home which is strong, it might mean that the value of import expenditure is going to be low. So if we have high tariffs on imports coming in from abroad, or quotas on imports from abroad, uh, or if we have embargoes on imports from abroad, it will reduce import expenditure, ceteris paribus, and therefore reduce the value of M and help to shift AD to the right as the value of this bracket increases. Okay? So protectionism at home and abroad is a key determinant of import expenditure and export revenue. And also relative inflation levels at home. The word relative is very important. Comparing inflation levels to other countries, not just looking at inflation in isolation at home, but looking at inflation relative to inflation rates abroad. So if inflation in the UK is higher than inflation in other countries around the world, especially uh, in the countries of our major trading partners, then our exports are going to be less competitive, demand for exports is going to be lower, the amount of export revenue generated will be lower. So high relative inflation reduces export competitiveness, uh, reduces revenues from exports, reduces X in this uh, bracket, which can then shift AD to the left. But if there is low relative inflation in the UK, vice versa, demand for exports can pick up, our exports are more competitive, and therefore revenues can increase, shifting AD to the right as the value of X minus M increases. We could also look at relative inflation in terms of what might happen to import expenditure. So if there is high relative inflation at home, it's not just, in, it's not just exports that become less competitive, but imports become more competitive. It might be cheaper to buy those goods and services from abroad if they can be imported as opposed to buying them at home, where inflation is higher. So if there is higher relative inflation, yes, exports are less competitive, but imports become more competitive. So also, our import expenditure may rise. So bear that all in mind. These are all the key determinants of X minus M. If X minus M goes up in value, AD will shift to the right. If X minus M goes down in value, AD will shift to the left. Okay? So looking at export revenues and import expenditures is key when you link um, all these factors to the X minus M equation. Thank you so much for watching guys, hopefully that all made sense. Normally students are not very good at determinants of X minus M, they get very confused. So do ensure you've taken this in and you're confident with this theory. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you all in the next video.